Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be starting with toluene and ending with benzene while making a few useful lab reagents along the way. So, the toluene I'm starting with is uh, Ace Hardware brand. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on purity, however on the back of the can is 100% toluene, so I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt and say it's pure toluene. Um, a good idea though, if you don't know how pure it is, would be to distill it first. Um, to do that, just distill your toluene. Uh, discard everything that comes over uh, below 110 degrees Celsius, and then take everything that comes over at 110 degrees Celsius, because that's about the boiling point of toluene. Anyway, to do this reaction, get 350 milliliters of water in a round bottom flask, and set up for reflux. I've got my gram condenser here. I know that's not the ideal reflux condenser, but, you know, I don't really want to drop that much money on another condenser. Anyway, to that, you're going to add 30 grams of potassium permanganate and try to get most of it to dissolve, and then 70 milliliters of toluene, and then reflux. And the products of this reaction will be manganese dioxide and potassium benzoate. So I'm going to add the reagents and start my condenser and then turn on the heat. So uh, stoichiometrically, you only need about 10 milliliters of toluene. However, to make the refluxing uh, take less time, the more toluene you add, the faster it'll go um, because it forms two distinctive layers. Anyway, um, thank you, Mist32YT, for teaching me that technique. I put a link to his channel in the description because you should really check it out. So anyway, I'll be uh, adding the reagents and turning everything on. Okay, we can see the two layers in the uh, boiling flask, and uh, I'm heating it with this oil bath on my hot plate. So, you may have noticed I got some new distillation gear. Um, I just got this one liter three neck round bottom flask. I got a nice Claisen still head adapter that'll take my uh, thermometer. Um, I got a jacketed adapter that takes that down to my Gram's condenser, and um, yeah, it's been really useful. So, I'm really glad I made that investment. Uh, some of it I got from Expedi Glass. And I'll put a link in the description too, because they're a good glassware company. And the other I got from a kind member on Science Madness. So anyway, um, refluxing should take about two and a half hours. And you'll know it's done when the uh, solution is uh, clear. Because all the, well not clear, but there's no permanganate ion left. All the manganese dioxide will um, precipitate out and uh, then we'll filter it at that step. But I'm just going to let this reflux for a few hours and uh, get back to you once that's done. It's been about a half an hour and uh, I realized a bit back that my hot plate would not get hot enough so I had to switch to this much more crude method of heating which is just a torch and a um, oil bath uh, which bothers me a lot. Uh, I wish I had a better heating mantle um, but at the moment I haven't invested in one yet. I also forgot to mention in the beginning of this video to add boiling chips to your setup, as that's an important part of reflux. So anyway, um, it's been about half an hour. You can see some bubbles coming through the toluene and uh, some condensing on the wall of the round bottom flask, but I still have about two hours to go. With the proper application of heat and more boiling chips added, the reaction goes just like it should. Um, we've got nice refluxing. You can see a um, pretty good drip right off the condenser. So that's good. Yep. I'll let this run for a good two hours. An hour and a half into the refluxing, um, the solution has gone from that purple to more of a brown, and that's the manganese dioxide that's been formed. Um, I'm going to keep uh, refluxing it for another hour just to make sure 100% that I consumed all the potassium permanganate. Now that it's been two and a half hours, I'm going to let this uh, solution cool down until it's manageable and then I'm going to vacuum filter it. So I'm going to be taking apart my setup 
and filtering it. Okay, so I just took apart the apparatus and I've got my hot uh, flask here. So the next step is going to be to vacuum filter it. And now look at the color of the uh, filtrate, the liquid that's passing through. Okay, I got a little manganese dioxide in there, but aside from that, the uh, water coming through was really clear. You can see it right there. And that's what we want. If you have any pink color in there, it means that not all your potassium permanganate has uh, reacted, and you're going to need to throw everything back in the flask and reflux for a bit longer. Okay, I'm going to finish filtering it. All right, so I added, uh, I, I filtered it again to get rid of the manganese dioxide that came through it first, and then I added um, the clear layers to the SEP funnel, and you can see two distinct layers. So that top layer is extra toluene, and you can go ahead and reuse that toluene um, for the synthesis again. So now I'm going to drain off the uh, bottom aqueous layer, and I'm going to boil that down. And that aqueous layer is a solution of potassium benzoate. So after I boil that down, I'll add hydrochloric acid to make benzoic acid. Okay, last night I took that bottom aqueous layer and I liters to make it easier to work with. To that I added hydrochloric acid to make a fluffy precipitate of benzoic acid. Uh, I waited for the solution to cool before I did this because benzoic acid isn't very soluble in cold water. I filtered and then washed the crystals, and that's what I'm left with here in my Buchner funnel, um, benzoic acid. So I'm sorry I couldn't film this. Um, I, the lighting was really bad, and uh, none, of the, none of the shots turned out. But anyway, from this benzoic acid, I'll be making benzene. So this far in the video, we have made manganese dioxide, which is a useful chemical, and benzoic acid, which is another useful chemical. Okay, when converting benzoic acid to benzene, I've seen uh, two methods. The first is dry distillation with a hydroxide, and this decarbo decarboxylates the benzoic acid to benzene and produces carbonate and water. The second method I've seen is dry distillation with an oxide, and that uh, also produces benzene and a carbonate, but it doesn't produce the water. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I've got calcium oxide that I have uh, made right here. And I'm going to be mixing that in a slight excess with the benzoic acid and then setting up for a dry distillation. Alright, now I'm preparing for a dry distillation. So I've got my benzoic acid here, I've got some oxide here, I'm not going to use all of this. And then I have this little distillation setup I made. I could use my old United Nuclear distillation kit, um, because since I got my new kit, you know, I don't really care too much about that one's well-being. Um, but I decided to go with this setup. Um, the reason I'd rather use this than glassware is because it's going to be really hard to clean the product out of here, so I might as well use something disposable. This is a can that my dichloromethane came in, and um, I took the top of it and poked a hole in it with a pair of scissors, um, stuck this brass tubing on, and then used Mighty Putty to seal it. So when I screw this on, um, it makes kind of a retort. So yeah, I'll be adding the two um, chemicals into here, mixing them thoroughly, and then torching them, and then collecting the vapor that comes out of here in a cooled flask. Okay, now that I'm set up for crude distillation, I'll be adding the heat. So something I forgot to mention when I was mixing the reagents is that you want to make sure that both of them are really dry, because the hydrolysis of calcium oxide is surprisingly exothermic. Anyway, at this point I should also point out that um, benzene, as you already know, is carcinogenic. So be really careful, work outside or in a fume hood um, whenever you're working with benzene and especially its vapors. So we see a little bit of fumes coming over out of the uh, brass tube. Probably can't see it on camera very well. But um, I'll keep uh, heating this up and uh, show you when it really starts to get going.
we now see a thick buildup of fumes inside the collection flask. I want to control heat so that uh, the benzene doesn't come over too fast and so it can't condense and it starts to escape out the top. So I'm um, taking away the heat if things get too vigorous in the collection flask, but we have a pretty um, stable amount of fumes uh, going over there and condensing on the walls of the flask in there. So. I'll let this run until no more reaction is observed. Because not a large volume of benzoic acid was used to start, not a large volume of benzene um, was yielded. So normally I would combine this with uh, other batches of benzoic acid and do a larger distillation, but anyway, this is my product. So as you can see, there's a slight yellow tinge to it. Um, I'm actually surprised with how clear this is. Most people report um, a orange or red color to it. In that case, it's easy to separate. Uh, just simple distillation will leave you with crystal clear benzene. I don't really feel as if I have enough benzene here to do a full-blown distillation for purification, so I'll be doing a, a few more batches of this reaction and combining all the benzoic acid in one big dry distillation and then purifying that. So, um, I guess I'll demonstrate benzene's flammability. It's poured onto the bottom of an upside down beaker and lit with an alcohol burner. Alright, well, in the end, I had a lot of fun doing this reaction. Um, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, let me know.